Hello, brothers and sisters. So I wanted to just make a quick video on the, um, the, the Christian who operates out of a place of emotions or feelings. Because when we do this, we open up doors for demonic realm and for um, evil and wicked spirits to interact with us. So, um, basically, the first thing is we can't trust our emotions. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 9 says that the heart is deceitful above all things, and it is desperately wicked. Who can know it? So, ask yourself this. Have you ever said any of these statements? I feel so overwhelmed. Or, I am an emotional train wreck. I can't seem to get it together or everything is driving me crazy. Did you know that the reason that we can't trust our emotions is because the demons and spirits can manipulate our emotions? We live in a world that tells us that we can trust and go with our heart and our feelings, but the reliance on emotions is the biggest lie from the pits of hell and it moves us in the wrong direction. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says that we are made body, soul, and spirit. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. It's the fleshly part. It's where we operate out of before we are given the Lord's spirit. And what we need to do is learn how to operate from the spirit man out, not from the soulish man in. So when we first accept... Uh, Jesus Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach, we are born again and we get a new spirit. 2 Corinthians 5.16 says that we are a new creation and the Holy Spirit comes to live with us. Now, when we're made new and we're born again, we receive a new spirit, but we don't receive a new body or a new soul. These are still things that are very much old nature. We didn't receive a brand new um batch of memories or emotions but now that we're born again and now that we have the holy spirit residing in us we are now a candidate for healing deliverance and sanctification but the thing is the soul man is a very vulnerable place and the enemy can torment us provoke and can use our past to try to control us but the Bible says that we have weapons to use against him. The weapons are the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, and not loving our lives unto the death. We can't, um, he can't, Satan, Satan cannot have your soul because the blood of Jesus Christ covers it. But he can put thoughts into your mind and try to take your testimony. Now, the demonic kingdom cannot read your mind. So what they do is they throw things at you. They keep throwing thoughts at you and they'll keep hitting you with the same thing over and over again. It could be something from your past. It could be something that you've struggled with, something that you are struggling with. And the enemy will continue to throw it at you, throw it at you, throw it at you, hoping that you'll take the bait and that you'll come into agreement with it or begin to operate in it. The Holy Spirit will write thoughts onto your heart and write the word of the Lord onto your heart, then into your mind as you renew your mind. The Holy Spirit will place desires into your heart that line up with God's plan for your life. This is why meditating on God's word is so important and it brings forth fruits of love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, goodness, mercy. But now the demons don't operate like that. They operate in the mind first. So what it sounds like is you'll start getting thoughts in your mind like, I'm not wanted here. I don't feel loved. I'm not worthy. There, there'll be uh, negative comments, self-condemning thoughts. And what the enemy wants is for these thoughts to sink into your heart. And then when they do sink into your heart, they open the door for spirits like rejection, isolation, and abandonment to take root. Romans 12, 2 says that our soul needs transformed, it needs renewed. Be not conformed to this world, but be renewed in your mind. 
And, and the only person that can renew our mind is God and God's word. That's what renews our mind. So think about this. Um, did you know that your brain makes new, new neurons every day? So it's kind of like getting little blank or mini uh, chalkboards and there's nothing written on them every day. Every day there's new, new little mini chalkboards. So what you choose to focus on will be written on those empty chalkboards. So if you center your thoughts on God's word and you center your thoughts on the ways of the Lord, your mind will begin to be transformed a little bit more each day. This is why 2 Corinthians 10, 5 says, our thoughts need to be taken captive. We need to cast down every argument, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Jesus Christ, Yehushua HaMashiach. So when these thoughts come into your mind, you need to saturate your mind with the blood of the lamb proclaiming the truth. So you need to speak it out loud. When these things start coming into your mind, you need to capture them right away. You need to declare out loud when these thoughts come at you. I am a child of the most high God. I am redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And I use that blood to take these thoughts captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Philippians 4, 8 says, but we need to meditate on the things of God. We need to meditate on the good things, the good stuff. We need to fix our mind and our thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, what is right, pure, lovely, and admirable. Think about what is excellent and worthy of praise. And honestly, there's only one person that I can think about who is excellent and worthy of praise. That's where we need to put our thoughts. That's where we need to put our mind. You can think about whatever you want. You can put your mind on whatever you want because God has given you free will to do that. But when those negative thoughts come in and they start bombarding your brain, you need to tell the devil that you are in charge of your thoughts. You need to dismiss those lies and focus on the things that are of God. Because if you let him into your life, if you let him into your thoughts, if you let him into your life, you give him a crack in the door he will come in and he will wreak havoc havoc in your life and when he does he's not coming by himself one spirit doesn't come by itself it will bring in a whole bunch of other spirits so you have um, one spirit comes in and it brings in seven of its friends with it and now you've got more things going on so we need to remember that we are gates and we need to keep the gate closed so you have the choice of what's going to be either on the inside of the gate or the outside of the gate. It's really important that we are capturing every thought we think, every word we speak, and every action that we do. This is something the Lord has been beating over my head since the beginning of my walk. Susan, your mouth gets you in trouble every time you get in trouble. It's usually in my mouth. I, I, something will pop in my head and I don't stop. I just let it, I just let it fly sometimes. And I'm just being open, honest, and transparent with you guys. It is a problem. And sometimes the enemy will fling something at me and then I take it and I fling it at somebody else. So the, the, the Lord keeps telling me you can't do that. You need to watch what you say because for the sake of a conversation, you open the door to things that you shouldn't open the door to. So, and I'm not saying that these are bad things, but it could be something that basically a thought that was tweaked just enough to the point where it could be borderlining gossip or borderlining slandering somebody. And that goes against what the, the Lord wants. He doesn't want us doing those things. But every single thought needs to be taken captive so it is only spoken to edify someone and reflect the Lord. Anything other than that, we're speaking for the enemy. So I hope this makes sense to you guys and I hope that um, you find this uh, helpful in your walk. So capture those thoughts you think and put everything under the obedience of the Lord and you will find that your life will be much better when you do that. Ask the Holy Spirit to convict you. Pray that you are convicted when something comes out of your mouth in a way or a manner that it should not. Pray and ask the Lord to convict you of those things and see if that helps your walk. I hope this guys, I hope this helps you guys 
and um, I love you and um, I'll be back um, as the Lord leads. Take care, everybody.